Okay, hello Math at Work 10. So this is kind of my setup for right now. We're going to have some class notes, we are going to have some examples done on a whiteboard, and I'm going to put it together and make a little movie for you. Okay, so that you can see kind of how things are being done, and then I'll post the video. If you are unable to stream the video, I will just post the PowerPoint that has all of the notes in it. Okay, and hopefully you can try and piece everything together based on the, the notes that are in there. Okay, so let's get started on our lesson, which is on length conversions right now. Okay, so before we left, we were doing a lot of conversions between imperial and metric units, and today we're going to focus on that imperial and metric uh, units of length. Okay, we've already done a lot of work with uh, both of these types, so when we talk about imperial units, okay, these were the units that we often typically refer to uh, that are used like in the United States. Okay, so imperial units are going to be our inches, feet, yards, and miles. Uh, we've talked about the relationship in between these. We've done conversions already going from yards to feet and inches or, um, you know, miles into yards, feet and inches, and that kind of thing. Okay, we know that there are 12 inches in a foot. We know there are three feet in one yard. We've been given that there are 1,760 yards in a mile. And then because there are three feet in a yard, we can multiply this number by three to get that 5,280 feet in a mile as well, okay? If you need a recap on any of that stuff, more than what I've just kind of gone over in the slides, I encourage you to go and take a look at your uh, notes that are on Google Classroom or your booklets that you already have on our imperial units. We've also talked about using reference for these as well, right? You know, like that uh, a foot is approximately the length of your foot or a yard is approximately uh, the height from the floor to maybe your hip. Uh, a mile is maybe the distance you can walk in 20 minutes, that kind of a thing, right? An inch being kind of like the, the width of a, a quarter or a loony or something like that, okay? So we've talked about reference before as well with imperial units. Uh, before the break, we also were looking at SI units, right? So these are like our metric units of measurement, typically uh, used by almost the entire rest of the world, okay? We've talked about those being... Uh, for length, specifically millimeters, centimeters, meters, and kilometers, SI units, right, System International or metric units, they operate in base 10, which is why you always see the conversions in between them, either being 10 or 100, which is 10 squared, or 1,000, 10 cubed, right, or 10,000, 10 to the power of 4, etc., etc., right? And the main conversions that we need to know is that there are 10 millimeters in one centimeter, there are 100 centimeters in one meter, and there are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. And we've kind of been dealing with those as well, right? And again, we did the measuring tape activity and we started looking at reference for um, each of these things as well, right? So like a centimeter might have been like the width of your finger. Um, a millimeter might have been like the width of a hair or something like that. Um, a meter, again, is very similar to a yard. Um, you know, again, like maybe the height to your hip. Uh, you know, a, a kilometer, again, you know, the distance that you can walk in maybe, you know, 10 to 12 minutes or something like that, right? If you have a good eye distance between your house and let's say a corner store or a friend's house or something might be exactly a kilometer, okay? Uh, and again, we've looked at those references as well. Today's lesson is going to focus on how we convert in between our imperial and our metric units of measurement, specifically with length, okay? Um, again, it's going to be important right, because we've seen the necessity already between being able to convert between systems, right, especially where we share a border with the United States, they use imperial, we use metric for the most part, so being able to convert between, you know, kilometers per hour and miles per hour, or even in terms of your height, right, I mean, if you go to get your driver's license, they will ask you for your height in centimeters, not necessarily feet and inches, okay, because we are a traditionally a metric using country. Right? Even in terms of construction, a lot of construction companies, um, they even still sell everything or they price things based on feet, inches, and yards, but you might have been given the measurements in meters, so again, we need to be able to have those conversion uh, abilities at our fingertips, okay? So the process is pretty much the exact same as what we were doing all with like conversions with uh, mass or conversions with volume or capacity, okay? It's the same type of idea, so this should be a relatively easy lesson to get into. Okay, so again, it's always start with what you have, right? The, the value you've been given, look at what you're trying to put it in, okay? And then look at the relationship between what do you have and what are you given, okay? What are you trying to get, right? What do you have, what do you want it in? Use that as a fraction. What you want goes on the top. What you have goes on the bottom. Do that calculation, right? And then cancel out the necessary units and give the final units uh, in your final answer as well. Okay, so let's look at uh, so the conversion table. These are the conversions you're going to be able to need. Uh, you will need to be able to do these types of problems. Okay, so what we know is that one inch is approximately 2.54 centimeters. One foot 
is 30.48 centimeters. One meter is about 3.28 feet. A yard is around 91 centimeters. Or because of that, we know that there's 100 centimeters in a meter, you can also just divide that 91 by 100 and get that one yard is approximately 0.91 meters, which is often, you know, you can see that's relatively close, which is why a yard stick and a meter stick are relatively the same thing, right? And we know that one mile is approximately 1.61 kilometers. Okay, other questions that you might see uh, might ask you to use an even more specific conversion. Uh, again, if they give you a conversion to use in a question, use that conversion. Uh, otherwise, these are, are fine and standard. Okay, so let's start looking at some examples. Uh, these is, this is where I'll switch to the whiteboard and you can see how we do this. Okay, so the first question we've been asked to do is to convert 6 inches into centimeters. So let's do that. So... First one, I'm going to convert six inches. So we start with what we have. We have six inches. I would like to convert that into centimeters. So again, what I want is centimeters. What I have is inches. So if we go back to the conversion table, we can see that there are 2.54 centimeters in one inch. So what we want is centimeters. What we have is inches. And we know for every one inch, there are 2.54 centimeters. Okay. Then we can do that quick multiplication of 6 times 2.54 divided by 1. We see that these inches here cancel and we get an answer of 15.24 centimeters. Okay, so that's our first question there. So we'll go back to question 2. Alright, so question 2 has asked us to convert 20 centimeters into the nearest fraction of an inch. So let's just start with the first part of the 20 centimeters. So again, switch back over to the whiteboard. Okay, so we've got 20 centimeters. All right, so start with what we have. Look at the relationship between what we have and what we want. So again, we've been asked to convert centimeters into inches. Okay, so what we want is inches, so our unit with inches will go on the top, what we have is centimeters, that will go on the bottom, and we know that for every one inch, there are 2.54 centimeters. Okay, so again, we're going to do that multiplication, so 20 times 1 divided by 2.54, right, that is a decimal there, okay, and what you get there is 7.874, right, those centimeters cancel and you're left with inches, okay. However, you do notice in the question that it asks you for the nearest fraction of an inch, right? This aspect here, 0.874, that's not a fraction, that's a decimal, okay? So what we need to figure out is, well, what's 0.874 in terms of a fraction of an inch? So you might remember when we first started this unit, we started looking at, like, the ruler and how it's broken down, okay? And again, you can go back and check those notes for that one as well. And one inch was broken up into... 16 parts, right? We had talked about you could break up that inch and there's 1 16th and then there's 2 16ths, which is the same as 1 8th or 3 16ths, 4 16ths was the same as a quarter, etc, 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 right? So we, we did all of that. So what we have is that this 0.874 of an inch is essentially 87% of the 16 parts that are in the whole. So what you would do then is take that decimal value, that 0 0.874, and you're going to multiply that by 16. Okay, because you're essentially trying to find what's 87% of the 16 pieces. Okay, so when you do that calculation, your 0 0.874 times 16, what you get is 13.984. All right, now we're talking nearest fraction of an inch. So I'm going to say, well, that's an even 14 pieces, right? So of the 16 pieces that are in an entire inch, that 0.874 makes up 14 pieces, right? So that means that we've got 14 out of 16 of an inch left over, okay? And again, we're reducing this fraction. We did a whole worksheet on reducing fractions, okay? You might remember that where you look at these and you say, well, can I reduce this? Yes, both of these are divisible by 2. So 14 divided by 2 is going to be 7, and 16 divided by 2 is going to be 8. So your final answer here, 20 centimeters, is 7 inches, right, and 7 eighths, right, or 7 and 7 eighths inches. Okay, so yes, it's close to 8, 
right? But if you were actually measuring for accuracy, right, we, we looked at those worksheets with, with the ruler or the measuring tape, right, this is what you'd measure, 7 and 7 eighths, okay? So that's kind of that basic unit conversion, okay? All right, um, so again, that's there as well. Uh, so there's example one, example two, uh, and then I do explain again, right? So since inches were broken into those 16 pieces, we take that decimal of 0.88, or I use the 0.874 uh, from the calculator, right? We multiply it by 16 to see how much, uh, how many of the 16ths of an inch are left over. And again, if you use the 0.88, you get exactly 14. If you know we use the 0.874, 13.98, so essentially 14. And again, you see that I've reduced that 14 sixteenths into seven eighths of an inch left over, right? So our final answer was that seven and seven eighths, okay? All right, so that's just kind of your basic, this is how we are going to convert, right? Very, very similar process to what we've already been doing in this class. Uh, so let's take a look at a little bit more application, okay? So where would we be doing these conversions hypothetically? All right, so in our first one here, we've got Carrie that works in a home decor store um, and that sells products from all over the world, right? So again, we know that certain countries use different units, right? The few that actually use Imperial. Um, so some are sold in Imperial units, some are sold in SI units. One of Carrie's jobs is to make the display tags and the tags give information in SI and Imperial measurements. So often she needs to convert between the SI and Imperial unit for length because it might be given in one, but she needs it uh, in both. Okay, so here's our first one. A rectangular mirror imported from the United States has dimensions of 30 inches by 48 inches, right? So we've talked about that before, right? Those little double apostrophes um, or almost like a quotation mark that is notation for inches. If it's just one, that's feet, okay? Uh, it's asking now what are the dimensions in centimeters? Okay, so we're just taking those 30 and 48 inches and we're going to convert those into centimeters. So again, what that's going to look like is we have our 30 inches and we need to multiply that and we want to put it in centimeters, right? So again, start with what you have, multiply it by that conversion as a fraction of what you want divided by what you have. Okay, so what we want is centimeters. What we have is inches and we have the conversion from the conversion table is that there are 2.54 centimeters in one inch, right? So we do that multiplication, 30 times 2.54 divided by the one, the inches cancel here and we get 76.2 centimeters. So if we're you know, listing this on a, on a price tag, we'll just list it as 76 centimeters, okay? Okay, and the other unit was 48, right? So it was a 30 inch by a 48 inch mirror. So the other one we're gonna do is our 48 inches, right? And we're gonna do the exact same thing, right? Because what we have, we start with what we have is inches. We are then multiplying by the relationship between what we want and what we have. We want it in centimeters. So we do our 2.54 centimeters in the top divided by our one inch in the bottom. We multiply there 48 times 2.54 divided by the one and our inches cancel and we're left in centimeters. And what we get there is 121.92 centimeters, which again, that would round, if we're putting this again on a price tag, it's just gonna round to 122, okay? All right, so our mirror has dimensions of uh, 76 centimeters by 122 centimeters. Okay, so that would be our application example part one there. All right, so again you see that conversion uh, and again there's your answer. Okay, uh, we've got a second item that we're trying to get the label on. All right, so this is a circular rug that has been imported from India and it has a diameter of 150 centimeters. Okay, so again a reminder about circles, diameter being the distance going all the way across uh, the circle passing through the center, right? So the maximum distance going across. And it's asking what's the diameter of the rug to the nearest inch. So we don't need to do that uh, thing that we just did with the fraction of an inch. It's just nearest inch, round up or round down. Okay. So again, what we have is a diameter of 150. Okay. So again, start with what we have. We have 150 centimeters 
We're going to multiply, always multiply by that conversion factor. What we want goes on the top, what we have goes on the bottom. So we want something in inches, we have units in centimeters. The relationship is one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. Okay, so that's the multiplication I do, 150 times 1 divided by 2.54, and we get this value here of 59.055 centimeters cancel, so that's inches, right, and it's just asking us to round the nearest inch, so that's a pretty easy round just to 59. Okay, so the diameter of our rug in this example is just 59 inches from the 150 centimeters. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at some examples now involving longer distances, right? Those are all, you know, just basic centimeters, inches, uh, values. Let's take a look at some that involve uh, miles and kilometers, okay? So if we have this one where Reese lives in Colebrook, next month he'll be driving in the USA and he wants to get familiar with thinking in miles before he travels. He researches the conversion between miles and kilometers and finds that one mile is approximately equal to 1.609 kilometers and that one kilometer is approximately 0.6214 miles. Okay, so you'll notice that this is a little bit different from the main conversion table I gave you. Uh, I used just 1.61 because that would have rounded. Okay, and you've been given an extra piece of information here where one kilometer is approximately 0.6214 miles. Okay, so because we've been given extra information, we are going to use the information given to us in the question, not the standard table. If there's no specific information given in a question, use the standard table that I've given you. Okay, uh, so here in this first part, We've got that some major highways in the states have a speed limit of 70 miles per hour, right? So NPH meaning miles per hour. What is the SI equivalent of 70 miles per hour? So essentially, what is it in kilometers per hour? Okay. So the time doesn't change. It's still in hours. So we don't need to worry about uh, the miles per hour. We just need to convert uh, 70 miles into what is that in kilometers. Okay, so let's do that. So again, what we have is we've got this 70 miles. So start with what we have, right? And we're gonna multiply by the conversion factor. What we want is something in kilometers and we have miles, right? So if we look back at the value that we've been given, right, we were told it was 1.609 kilometers in a mile. So that's the value we'll use. Right, and then we do that multiplication. Right, so 70 times 1.609 divided by the 1. Our miles will cancel, and what that gives us is 112.63 kilometers. Right, now we're talking speed limits at this point. No one's going to write a sign that says 112.63 kilometers per hour, so let's call it 113. Okay, it's rather specific, but still, that's its equivalent. Right? So 70 miles per hour is approximately equivalent right, to 13 kilometers per hour. All right? Notice there is a difference there with how we, how we write them, right in the notation with miles per hour, we actually write the P that stands for per, whereas when we write kilometers per hour, we actually just use the slash symbol for per. Again, it's just a difference in countries and their notations. Okay. Okay, so that's the value that we have there. Okay, so we've got that 70 miles is approximately 113 kilometers. Okay, uh, so in this one, we go back the other way. So here, the speed limit on Highway 1 driving through Colebrook is 70 kilometers per hour. What is the equivalent uh, to the speed limit, the imperial equivalent? Okay, so again, same type of conversion here. Start with what you have, multiply it by your conversion factor. Okay, so what we've got is our 70 kilometers per hour. I'm just going to quickly write down those conversions again so I can use them. Okay. All right, so we start with what we have. We have 70 kilometers per hour. Again, we're just interested in the converting of the actual distance, so we start with 70 kilometers. In this one, we have a choice. 
right? So if we went back to the question, it does show that there's a relationship between one kilometer and how many miles that is. So what we could do is multiply by that relationship, right? Where what we want is something in miles, what we have is something in kilometers. And we can use the second relationship that they gave us in the problem, which was that there are 0 0.6214 miles in one kilometer. All right, so it's a different conversion, but we can use it because it was given to us in the question. Uh, and then in doing that, we see that our kilometers will cancel, and we can multiply 70 times 0.6214, and we get an answer of 43.5, right, 498, so 0.5 miles, all right? The other thing you could have done with this as well is still use the original conversion, kept that 70 kilometers starting with what you have, and use that same relationship where, again, what you want is miles, what you have is kilometers, but use the relationship where it was like one um, mile was 1.609 kilometers, right? So you'd have the one here and the 1.609 there, right? And then again, you'd see your kilometers canceling and you're still left with miles. And then if you do that multiplication, 70 times one divided by 1.609, right, you still get that same value of 43.5 miles, right? It's slightly different in terms of the decimal roundings, but you still get the same overall answer, right? So you do have two options there. Both will give you the same uh, main answer. Okay, so our 70 kilometers per hour is about 43 and a half miles per hour, or if you wanted to say 44, that's fine for a speed limit sign. Okay, um, so that's where we're at with that one now. Okay. Right, so there's those values, and there's our thing. Okay, so that's just the lesson on unit conversions, like length conversions. Again, it's not a whole lot of new, new stuff other than different tables, right? But the actual math that you're doing is still the same. So what I have posted to Google Classroom uh, for you to work on now is a little assignment, right? Very similar to the kind of the, like the work booklets that I would give you in class to do. Okay, where I would just kind of let you work on them and then I'd be, you know, asking you questions or let you ask me questions, okay? I think it's about 10 questions to that assignment. You're going to do them all based on the stuff that you did here. Uh, when you finish that worksheet, uh, just take a picture of it or type it up and upload it to Google Classroom, right? So either email it to me or just submit it so that I can give you feedback so you know that you're on the right track. And again, in terms of timeline, it'd be great if you could have this done by April 10th. It gives me time to give you some feedback uh, before you're kind of working on your next lesson uh, because there's going to be a chapter project uh, with this. So you want to be able to be comfortable with that. And this will allow me to kind of give you an idea as to what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. Okay. All right. So hopefully that worked. Um, again, if you are looking at the assignment and you're like, whoa, I don't understand what to do with this, please send me an email. Uh, we can either chat via just email, or if you find that these little kind of whiteboard sessions help, we might, and you've got access to kind of good enough streaming internet, we can schedule like a, a Google Hangout uh, time, like kind of office hours for Math at Work 10, so that people can ask particular questions if they're really getting stuck on something. Okay, uh, so that's that.